I was wondering if you changed anything up in your preparation this week? Are you going for a circuit breaker or try for something different? Um, oh, we're, we're, we're trying to prepare as best we, best we can. Um, we're disappointed with our effort last week against uh, against the Hawks. Um, so yeah, we um, got Crows on on Saturday down in down at Hobart. Um, you know, it's a it's a shortened break, six days. So um, you know, we've got to get our uh, get our players fresh, fresh and firing, and um, hopefully put in a better performance than they did last week. That session had a bit of bring your mouth guard about it. It was it was pretty physical. Uh, it's seen from the sideline. Oh, we do 18 v 18 every every week, so no no different to what we've we've really done in the last last couple of weeks. But um, yeah, sometimes we 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 only got one session really this week in terms of preparation, a serious session. I only played three days ago, and then three days before we we, we go again and and compound that a little bit is our VFL side play on on Friday up in um, up in Sydney. So um, you know to have the 18 v 18 opportunity today was. Um, was timely for us, but um, yeah, listen, we um, we know we got a lot of work to do in in the, in the way that we play and get more competitive. You know, it, uh, we're competitive in uh, phases of games, but just not consistent enough. And trying to stop um, opposition run-ons, you know, like we scored the first two goals of the game and against Hawthorne and look okay for 15 minutes, and then they scored nine unanswered goals. So um, that that comes a little bit with um, with a with a side that's been around the bottom and just. You know, haven't got really, really strong belief, um, and we've just got to try to turn that around. It's going to take a period of time, unfortunately. It's not like, um, you know, really, really strong sides that have got enormous belief in one another. They respond to uh, adversity and challenges pretty quickly, usually. And uh, the sides that have been through it for a long period of time just takes a lot longer to do, and that's what we're working through. The basic footy effort has been questioned widely in the last couple of days. Where do you think it's at? Um, oh, we got we we got a group of players that want to get better, um, and that's their intent. This is what I'm talking around the belief stuff. You know, when you've been whacked around the ears a bit for four or five years, um, it just uh, it's it's easy for them to fall into woe is me. Um, here we here we go again type of thing. That's what we're trying to trying to arrest, but um, it might just take take a bit of time. Um, hopefully hopefully not. But we need we know we need to be be better in that space and. Um, and you know some of that is just you know strong leadership from coaching staff, strong leadership from our our players that have been around for for a period of time, and um, see if we can steer us steer it back in the right direction. In any way, did you consider the old Dennis Pagan jug and a joke, or the modern version of that, just a complete circuit breaker? Um, what get away from it altogether? I think, I think Dennis did it years ago. Yeah. Took him down the pub for a beer. I don't know, can you still do anything like that? <laughs> um, well, you probably, you probably can, but um, you see, listen, you're open, you're, open to, you're open to criticism no matter what. I mean, some, someone was saying last week about the Harley Reid stuff. Oh, God, why didn't you just tank that game? It's actually illegal to tank in our game. Yeah. Yet everyone in the competition saying, why didn't you? You're mad that you didn't. It's just like, like you can't win, can you? <laughs> um, so we, we just go out there and uh, do our best. We've been involved in this game for a long, long period of time, um, and we're not performing anywhere near we'd like. But you know, I, I, I can remember playing in some uh, playing in some sides myself, and um, and playing um, that weren't performing so well, um, and also playing in sides that were going really, really well, and coaching sides that were going really well, and coaching sides that were going no good either. <laughs> this is. It's just swings and roundabouts. It's, uh, it's it's our turn right at the present time, but it's not going to stay that way forever. What should North Melbourne fans be looking for this week? Uh, just to, I guess, hang their hat on as far as improvement goes then? Yeah, well, it, it's, for, for mine, it's about the journey. And it's, this, this is about the history of our footy club. We're a blue-collar footy club. Um, and it was very, very similar when I was at, when I was at Hawthorne. The, the ups and downs, there's a blue-collar club as well. Um, and... You know, Hawthorne, Hawthorne won a flag in 61 and they were, they were back on the bottom by 64. You, know, you, talk, you talk about the ups and downs of a footy club. Um, this footy club was on the bottom in 1972 and they won a flag by 1975. Um, so, you know, history shows that, you, that sides will go up and down. You know, Collingwood three years ago was second bottom. Um, then they win a, win a flag at the end of last year. So um, it, it, it can be done. you just got to hang in there when the chips are down and know full well that if you just stay the course and stay strong with alignment. So for our, for our supporters, um, right, at, right at the present time, it's just like um, get excited by the new generation of players that are coming through. And 
Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be disappointed as the, co as the players were, as the coaches were, I'm sure our supporters were in terms of just the pure win and loss. But um, get excited by Colby McKercher taking four, four bounces and then um, hitting Paul Curtis on the chest um, with, a, with a spot out kick and say, well, I wonder if he could turn into a Zach Merritt type player with you know, 60, 80, 100 games under his belt. And um, that's, that's the exciting thing about searching for the future and be part of the journey right now when it's not so good um, to then celebrate the time when it does come better for us. Just on that journey, there are similarities in your first two years at North to your first two years at Hawthorne. Is there anything from that period you've drawn on in the recent period as to how you can coach and what you can do with the group? Yeah, yeah, just the main one is stay the course. Um, and don't don't lose don't lose belief, uh, particularly the playing group, but right through right through the club because you know the, you got you guys have got a job to do and there's a um, there's um, mm. the pressure that comes from outside. But what we can't allow that pressure from outside to influence what's going on in, in, inside the club and the, inside the walls of the club from the board right through to the players and um, and that alignment's that alignment's strong. I, I don't. I don't particularly think you or anyone else in the football media is particularly surprised at what's what's going on. Um, we've had some we've had some hardship that we've got we've had to deal with over the last over the last twelve months. You know, we've got one player who's a um, who's a free agent in Ben Mackay, who's been at the club for seven years, decides to decides to move on. Um, yeah, you know, Taron, who's a really important player for the future of our footy club, in circumstances that we couldn't really control, he he moves on as well, um, and a and a bloke that we actually recruited to bring into the club in a key defensive does it does his ACL and can't compete and play. So um, there's a circumstance that that just happens in footy, um, unfortunately, and it just compounds it right at the present time when you're trying to climb yourself off the canvas. It's just difficult when some of those things that are uncontrollables. Um, hit you at the same time. So that's why it's so important at board level that you just stay the course and just understand this. It's not going to, that sort of hardship and adversity is not going to stay that way forever. Um, but just while it is, just stick fat and just, just hang in there. And that's why, um, you know, as a, as a board and a, an administration of the club and a, and a coaching group, that's why it's so, so important that you stay strong. Is that message resonating with players? We pick up the paper this morning and read that LDU's put off his contract talks until later on. So is that message, is it getting through to players and they want to sign yeah, off? Yeah, well, I think, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's um, any surprise that any player in the competition, is, the, the, the free agency debate is one that for you guys to argue about in terms of its effect or, or not. But um, players, there's, there's so much money in the game now, they're not, they're not going anywhere for money free agents they're going for where they can get uh, get some success so um, you know that, that was uh, um, for, forever and a day since free agency has been in um, I'd say the vast majority have been attracted to the to the bigger type of clubs um, so we need to work our way through that we've got Camzu R out at the end of this year in terms of free agency and we've got LDU at the, at the end of next year um, and we'll just work our way through that and um, if um, we'll do, be doing everything we can, just like we did with Ben, to try and get him to stay. But if they choose to go, then that's the that's the players' association brief that they're um, given that liberty to explore another club if they get that opportunity um, after their seventh or eighth year. So um, we'll work our way through that over the next 18 months. You spoke after the game about um, maybe needing to bring your plans forward to, to shift Harry Sheagle into the midfield or forward of centre. Does that happen this week potentially? Um, well, we haven't selected yet. We'll do that this afternoon, but that, we'll, we'll give that some consideration. I mean, at the various stages of the game last week, he was in the midfield, um, and um, you know, because of what was going on with the McGuinness tag and um, and that sort of stuff. So um, he was pushing at various uh, various times last year, and we'll just see the, the balance of us. So I did, as, as I said in the post match yesterday, um, Sheasel playing back for us has been actually one <laughs> one part of the ground that we can say, okay, that's that's safely working okay for us. Um, and um, we'll, do, we'll just work out what, what time it is. We, we knew that probably at the time that we moved him to halfback that that was just going to be an introduction to AFL footy for him. It was probably unlikely that was going to be the position that he was going to play the rest of his career. But he'd done it so well that it was just like, well, it's nice and safe to say you know, he's, uh, he's nice and consolidated in, in that spot and that's, that's safe for us. But um, at some point in time, we're going to move him. Is that this week? Don't know. It might be at some stage of the game. Um, but at some stage in the future, I'm sure he's going to be moving to a, either a midfield or forward role. Waterloo back this week? 
Oh, yeah, well, he's right in the mix, mix for selection. So, um, yeah, he trained well today and, yeah, he'll, uh, uh, he'll be in the mix. We just need to work out what the balance of our side is. But, yeah, we'd like to think he's going to be available. Just a broader one, there's a story today that's highlighting the concerns of families um, around the illicit drugs policy, not knowing whether their son's been affected and that sort of thing. You've been in the game basically for the entirety of this current illicit drugs policy. Do you, do you think more people should know when a player's going through some challenges? Do you think families and that sort of thing should be aware? Oh, I've, got, I've got my views on it, but I prefer not, prefer not to uh, not to share them, uh, share them publicly. Um, like it's, there's controversy everywhere in this space, whether it's illicit drugs or water. Um, it's a very, very complicated area, very, very complicated. Um, and um, and all I would say is that there's there's people in higher positions than me that are in better um, uh, better positions to be able to judge what they should do. But all, all I do know, which is the AFL have gone on record as saying anyway, is that we need to review the policy to try to get this uh, get this balance between um, between the player welfare side of things and then obviously the legitimacy of, um, of of drug taking in society, let alone um, let alone performance enhancing. So um, that'll that'll see itself through, I'm sure, with the with the AFL. Are we getting out, or do you think we're getting out of whack with marking contests, and the bloke can no longer take the footy as we have for 100 years? Or are you happy with where, say, the green one? Are you happy with that? Um. Yeah, I think. Th listen, <laughs> once, once again, it's a, it's. A, very, very, uh, very difficult situation because it's a combative sport, um, and um, what I, what I've always wanted um, to have judged is the intent of the player, and I reckon you can tell the intent of a player by his eyes. Um, and if his eyes turn off the football and go towards an opponent, then I reckon it's a different intent than if his eyes are on the football. And guess what? If his eyes are on the football. Um, it's very, very unlikely that his intent is to try to um, hurt an opposition player or, or take him out. So, um, yeah, if, if in all the in all the judgments tribunalised, irrespective of the outcome, um, what was the intent of the player? And if they could judge that intent was to uh, deliberately infringe in some sort of manner, then they should be penalised, whether it's just a free kick or whether it's the tribunal. Um, if they if they didn't show any intent to do that and it was just an act of 18 bodies against 18 bodies on a yeah. field that's um, that's combative sport, um, then I think we need to need to understand that in a lot of these instances there wasn't a genuine intent for the um, for the collision and the severity of the collision to take place. It's the second one with that. I know Eddie McGuire's been big on it. Should you be given a duty of care if you're running back bravely? With the flight, but we're protecting that player at the moment, or it seems that rather than the one coming in a straight line at the ball. Um, oh, listen, we could yeah. we, we could paint so many different scenarios in terms. You know, it's, it's like the um, the poor guy that's coming in to lay a tackle, and the guy's picking up a ground ball, and he dives his head straight into the straight into the player, and gets a free kick against. For he didn't do anything. So there's all there's all different scenarios, and once again, I just say what. As, a, as an umpire or as a tribunal, whichever way it goes on these these decisions, what's the, what's the intent of the player? If the intent of the player who's picking up the ball, diving into the guy who's coming into the tackle, then don't pay for a kick, because uh, it wasn't his intent to actually hit him high. He caused the high contact because he he dived in. So what's what's the, what's the intent of the player? I'm, then then for mine, it's really really easy to argue at the tribunal. What was his intent? Well, he took his eyes off the ball and he tried to take that bloke out. Uh, what was the intent here? Well, his intent was the player tried to actually duck his head and you know, receive a free kick for the high contact. And if it was just judged around intent, then I'm sure it would be a bit, e bit easier for the public to understand and certainly for players and coaches to understand.